Hi everyone! Today's POI math lesson is all about graph theory and topology, and we're going to start it off by going back in time to a town called Königsberg, which is located in modern Kaliningrad, Russia. Königsberg sits right at the mouth of the Pregel River, and there happen to be two islands that sit in the middle of this river. If we go back in time a couple hundred years, these two islands are connected to the shore on either side via one, two, three, four, five, six bridges, and a seventh that connects the two islands together. Some of the greatest mathematical minds in history were perplexed by a problem. Was it possible to walk through Koenigsberg in such a way that you never missed any of the bridges, but you did cross each bridge exactly once? Thirty years before the American Revolution, along comes a mathematician by the name of Leonard Euler, who proved that it wasn't possible. This is how he did it. He realized that the path you take over land is irrelevant, so he reduced each landmass down to a dot, four of them, one for each shore, one for each island. He then connected together each of these dots via a series of line segments that were meant to stand in for the bridges. He referred to each dot as a vertex, and to each of the line segments in between the vertices as edges. He realized very quickly that the properties that vertices and their edges had was paramount to solving this problem. Namely, if you have a vertex, and you have an edge that carries you to that vertex, you are stuck unless you have another edge that takes you back out. He began counting the number of edges that connected to each vertex and referred to this number as a degree. He then formalized the problem into what's called an Eulerian path. What he realized was, if you have a diagram like this, called a graph, the only way you could visit each edge only once was if there were either zero or two vertices that had a degree that was an odd number. In fact, if there are two of them, it means that one of those points is your beginning point and one is the end point. Needless to say, there is no Eulerian path that goes through the seven bridges of Königsberg. We can create one by adding an additional bridge, such that we now have two vertices that have a degree of four and two vertices with an odd number. One's our start, one's our end, right? Well, what if you want to end at the same point where you started? This is what's known as an Eulerian circuit. And it means that all the vertices have to have a degree of an even number. Once again, we don't have one in the seven bridges of Königsberg, but what if we recast it such that we did? We can put a bridge anywhere we want. So I'm going to make sure that there's always an even number of bridges connecting each landmass together. And once again, I'm going to reduce the landmasses down to four points and ensure that each of them has a degree of four. That is, four edges that connect them together, right? Wait a second. This looks really familiar. In fact, it looks just like Zan's diamond. This is because Zan's diamond is an attempt to do exactly the same thing. Connect together four individual vertices via a series of line segments that never repeat. In fact, this is true of any third order motion. Each of them has an Eulerian circuit buried within it. How cool is that? Want another application for this kind of math? All right, let's fast forward about 100 years. We'll talk about an Irish mathematician by the name of William Hamilton. Hamilton is also interested in connecting the dots, but in a different way. He's more concerned about the dots than he is the line segments that go between them. Specifically, he wants to visit each dot only once. We would refer to this as a Hamiltonian path. We can go a step further, just like Euler did, and return to the same point where we started, in which case we're talking about a Hamiltonian cycle. This has an application for the three-dimensional spinning. Namely, we usually play inside of three-dimensional spinning inside of a three-dimensional object called an octahedron. If you reduce that octahedron down to six individual points in space, you can then connect them together by a series of edges that mean you visit each point only once. In fact, it turns out that all platonic solids have buried within them both a Hamiltonian path and a Hamiltonian cycle. I think that's pretty cool, personally. In fact, whenever you are playing around with a poi pattern that uses a repeating kind of path like this, you're probably playing around with this type of mathematics, called graph theory. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and happy holidays. Peace.